Wow. <laughs> Just really pretty strawberry. Wow. These are some good wines. You ready for the reveal? Let's get it. I'm Matthew Horky. For the last seven years, I've traveled around the world tasting thousands of wines annually in search of the most unique, exciting, and expensive bottles on the planet. There's a lot of love out there for the big, bold, yet delicate flavors of Chat Nuff to Pop. But while people might love the wines, they don't always love the rising prices. I'm hoping to find a cheaper alternative today. We're gonna go to an adjacent village called Kairan. Chateau de Pop is one of the crews of the Southern Rhone, wines that are branded labeled by the village that they're from. Kairan is a similar principle. There are actually 18 crews in the Rhone of some in the north are actually really famous like Hermitage, Cornas, Cote Roti. In the Southern Rhone, Chateau de Pop is the most famous, Tavel for Rose. Gigandas has garnered a lot of popularity in the recent decade too. Kairan falls in this little triangle of villages that I think are excellent in the Southern Rhone. You have Kairan that's sitting kind of at the top next to Rasto. You go down to the southeast, you have Gigandas Vakiras. From the southwest part of Kairan, that's where you're gonna have shit enough to pop. I first became familiar with these wines years ago when I started really specializing in shit enough to pop because a lot of producers actually have vineyards in Kairan and the entry level Kairans can be ridiculously inexpensive in Europe, sometimes 13, 14 euros. I've seen them in America for 15 to 20 bucks. So that's absurd value for money. They're gonna be made up of similar grapes. Chiron needs to be at least 50% Grenache and then a minimum 20% of Syrah and Morvedra. And then a bunch of old grapes can be thrown in like Carignan, Senso, Picpoul Noir, a bunch of other stuff as well. In essence though, they are GSM. The appellation of Cote de Rhone was formed in France in 1937. In 1953, Chiron wines were approved to be named Cote du Rhone Chiron. In 1967, it became Cote du Rhone Village Chiron. In 2016, it got its own appellation just labeled Chiron. I think I got those numbers right. I want to thank my friend Edwin Youngsa. He actually owns a bed and breakfast in Kairan and he helped connect me with these producers because I really wanted to do a video. I've been really impressed with the wines in the past. All right, let's find some delicious, big, meaty red wines. You ready? I'm ready. Let's get tasting. Big wines tasting out of big glasses. These are my Rovsia glasses. These are the best inexpensive wine glasses I've ever used. They're supposed to be burgundy glasses, but they really work well with Grenache based wines. They work well with all types of reds, even white wines. I bought a first set for a blind tasting video and I like them so much I bought a second set. I'll put a link in the description box below. It helps the channel if you purchase them, so thanks a lot. Got my legal pad ready? Let's go. Coravin these bad babies and had somebody mix them up. Let's taste them. In the past, I've been impressed with the basic, the entry level Chiron wines. These are all reserve wines or special cuvées, more expensive wines of the state, although they are a lot less than Chateau to Pop. Chiron kept getting elevated in the Appalachian system because it was a village that showed a lot of quality and it's a cooler area of the Southern Rhone. So Syrah does well and I get a lot of Syrah in wine one. Wow. <laughs> wine one, just really pretty strong. Strawberry flower. I mean, this is high quality stuff. A little bit of meat, pepper. The bramble berry and this kind of savage note of Syrah really comes through here. I mean, this really, to me, these wines have to have a lot of Grenache in them, but this really, to me, kind of acts like a Northern Rhone Syrah. It's serious, it's tannic, it's structured. Maybe not as Grenache dominant as some people like in some of the Chateauneuf de Pops, but I think this is really, truly an outstanding effort. Oh, that's a good start. Let's move on to wine number two. Oh, I'm pumped because these are some good wines. <laughs> wow, really, wine two has some more red fruit type flavors. Can be like a Chateauneuf-esque. This one's a lot more meaty, like beef jerky type of flavors. A lot of pepper really meaty. This one on the right is going to be a more of a crowd pleaser. It's a little bit softer. It's not as tannic. The finish isn't as long as wine number one, although I think this is going to be more of a crowd pleaser, but I'm I'm really digging wine one. Yeah, that Serranus really gets to me a little bit more grip. Just knocked over my spit cup and knocked over my Corvin. Got two cameras, the light, all this stuff going on. <laughs> Sometimes it can be hard to shoot some videos. Okay, let's go on to wine number three here. Wine three is the most floral than wine one and two. Strawberry, cherry, two was the meatiest, one was the most Syrah-like, and then three is more red fruit. Grippy tannin, long finish. 
floral. I think this is the most Chateauneuf de Poppy, I think, uh, out of all the wines so far. Let's move on to wine number four. Smells a little bit younger, more dark fruit. Again, it feels more Syrah dominant. Again, it looks actually a little bit darker too. Brambleberry, violets, meat. It's more Northern Road-esque, but not as much as wine one. This kind of, I hadn't tasted Chiron wines in a long time. I remember the Chiron wines, especially the entry level ones were a lot denser than you'll see in Cote de Rhone Village or some of the other neighboring villages. But I'm really surprised at some of these wines, how Syrah-like the flavor intensity is because you have to have a lot of Grenache in these wines. Southern Rhone, it's a little bit too warm. The Syrah doesn't ripen evenly. It's mostly used for color, except Chiron is a village that's notable for Syrah. I wonder if any producers there are making Syrah-only wines. Let's move on to number five here. Wow, <laughs> five is the most floral. Violets, this is like raw meat. I mean, I remember two is like beef jerky. This is more like blue rare steak type flavors. Floral, minerally, this is really complex. Hold on, I gotta do a little comparison here. <laughs> These are some good wines. You ready for the reveal? Let's get it. I have some wines here that are exceptional wines. You might have to run out and get some of these wines. Number two, meaty beef jerky, and it's softer. It didn't have the length of the other four, but I think it's an exceptional wine. It's very good. It's gonna be the most crowd-pleasing because the tannins are the softest. So those of you that like the Southern Rhone flavors, maybe you have a spouse, significant other that doesn't like the tannins, the grip, I think this is something to go for. 91 points, you ready? Let's take a look here. This is uh, the Domaine Galival. This is the La Montagne Chiron 2019. Let me see what it is here. This runs in at 35 bucks. This is owned by a big cooperative uh, around Chateauneuf de Pop. This is their private lizard. Gorgeous label, 91 points, super accessible. Number four here. It was Syrah dominant, Brambleberry minerally. It wasn't quite as long. Wine one, I thought was also Syrah dominant. It's not gonna be Syrah dominant. I'm just talking about the flavors came through. Uh, I preferred wine one a little bit more than wine four. Still outstanding wine. I gave it 92 points. Let's take a look here. This is the Domaine Rousset. This is the Chiron Via Vigne. This is one of the most popular producers, one of the best producers. Also make a Gigandas, which was in the Jeb Dinnock's top 100 wines of last year. 29 bucks. 92 point wine, Rhone style. A wine that I think can age, I think it's just Grenache and Syrah. So the Syrah comes out here. Pretty good stuff at 29 bucks. It's so funny, it just Northern Rhone-esque to me. Really refined stuff. Wine three, most red fruit. Three and wine five are the most Chateauneuf de Pop-esque type of wines. Red fruit, it's a little bit softer. It still has great length. It's really floral, 93 points. Let's take a look here. This is the Boisson. This is the Le Exigence. That's, that's how we pronounce it in French. Uh, Chiron, 25 bucks. It's Grenache, Syrah, Morvedra, aged in barrel for 12 months to soften the tannins. <laughs> that's fantastic value at 25 bucks. Wow, that's a heck of a wine. Here we go, the top two wines. It was like a half a point difference to me. These top two I thought were, to me, really tickled my palate. I went back and forth. I think, honestly, a lot of you would probably prefer these two wines, the Galuvan and the Boisson, because they're a little bit softer, a little easier to drink. Not everyone's gonna like wine one, Syrah, more Northern Rhone, Syrah-esque, chewy tannins, brambleberry. Again, like I said, you have to have a lot of Grenache. I'm surprised that the Syrah came through here. Another, probably one of the most famous producers, this is the Domain Richaud de la Abrescade. This is 39 bucks, 16% alcohol. I did not feel that at all. This is a fantastic, really, really famous producer. Good stuff. Okay, top wine. Mineral flower had the raw meat type flavors. This was really shot enough to pop esque. 94 points. I thought it was outstanding. Late edition. The Domaine Presidente. They also make shot enough to pop the Cachan Vievin, old vine. <sighs> 60 year old Grenache and Syrah vines. Here's the kicker. You ready for this? 22 bucks. Cheapest wine. Gave 94 points. 
that's the power of blind tasting. I thought all these wines were well worth your time, especially if you like the style of the Rhone. So tell me, do you know about Chiron? Are there any other villages in the Southern Rhone that you really like? Drop it in the comments below. Thanks a lot. I'll see you soon.